Our next speakers come from St. Mary's for Kids in New York. I think you'll notice a theme here today. Many of our presenters are from children's hospitals, and many of them are responsible for neonatal intensive care. Uh, Connexol has uh, found a remarkable amount of success over the last, I would say, two years or so. Uh, a lot of it originates from Texas Children's, and uh, when Dr. Powell spoke about his presentation, he spoke to Texas Children's before he ever picked up the phone and called us, and I've found over the course of the last several years, it seems everybody calls Texas Children's before they call us. Melita Howell is the, uh, uh, the, the key influencer at Texas Children's, and she's a, uh, a, fortunately a significant advocate for what we do. I would also say, uh, in Maria's presentation, she talked about virtual call points. Uh, just as a public service announcement, that is a unique feature to Connexol, uh, developed by our friend Jason Wilson over in the front row. And we find many hospitals use virtual call points to alert staff. So uh, uh, in the room uh, with us today is, uh, are a couple of folks from the University of Michigan. They use virtual call points to alert the trauma center when a flight for life is coming in. Uh, Texas Children's uses it in the same way that you do, Maria. Uh, they have a concierge at the front door at the entrance to Texas Children's. And when a mom presents herself uh, for a delivery, the concierge alerts labor and delivery that there's a mom uh, that needs to be escorted upstairs. So uh, it's not just about sending alarms. Sometimes it's about sharing information with folks who need to, need to have it. Uh, enough with uh, the public service announcement. We'll get on to the next uh, speakers. Uh, as I said, they're from St. Mary's for Kids in New York. One of our speakers is Bensie Matthew. Uh, she is the Director of Clinical Information. She's a pediatric nurse. She was a nurse manager for about six years. Uh, late, last three years, she has been in the role of clinical informatics. So she moved from delivering clinical care to now clinical informatics. With her today is Steve Massanello. He's the Director of Clinical Systems at St. Mary's for Kids. He, is, uh, he has been with St. Mary's for about three years. Uh, he's been in IT for 15 years, but in the hospital for more than five years. Um, he works with every piece of technology at St. Mary's, including Connexol, uh, with every department depending on need. So he is, uh, uh, Maria and I use the same term. He would be our propeller head, and Bensi would be our nurse, and I'm delighted to have them with us. Thanks, guys. As John said, my name is Nancy Matthew, and uh, I've been with the, uh, pediatrics for most of my nursing career, and as a nurse manager at St. Mary's for over six years, and then, like you said, transitioned into clinical informatics, not knowing what exactly that meant. Okay. Oh, they know all about you. He's a good guy. <laughs> okay. So what we want to talk about today is the clinical workflow improvements that came to us with technology upgrade and alarm management. So I don't know how many of you guys have heard about St. Mary's um, Hospital for Children, but I would like to say that we did have a lot of presentations from the NICU side of uh, the hospital and the acute care setting. Um, St. Mary's would be what happens to children after NICU, before they go home. So we are a not-for-profit pediatric healthcare system, and we have a 97-bedded inpatient facility in Bayside, Queens, New York. We serve children with post-acute needs. So children who are bor born prematurely um, that come out of the NICUs, children with uh, acute events that happen to them, quote unquote, was normal for the most part of their life, something like um, TBI, um, any other acute event that happens to them that alters their life altogether and their family's life, they come to St. Mary's um, for post-acute care, but also we end up sometimes being the home for those children until they are able to transition into an adult facility. So it can be a long-term care for children. What we are actually regulated by the Department of Health. Uh, they look at us as if we were the traditional um, geriatric nursing home, which is not what we are. We also have a large home care piece to our healthcare system. We serve about 4,000 kids per day um, in these several different programs we have. And we are a Meditech 6 site. And Most in 2012, we uh, built a new hospital next to the old hospital. So. Um, and that exactly came with a lot of changes and all of technology. So we had threw everything at our nurses and all clinical staff overnight. Yeah. Okay. So the challenges we faced in this whole process, we obviously had outdated technologies with a lot of limitations uh, between communicate, 
communicating to the clinicians that at times led to delay in patient care itself. Um, there were a lot of downtime due to these old processes and uh, technology in place that obviously interrupted the patient care. Uh, over this last three years, we had made several adjustments to the integration that we did put together in 2012 uh, to manage the fatigue that everybody spoke about and as needs came up. So our previous workflow, system, workflow that we had in our old building, basically we had a centralized clinical monitoring system. What we do monitor at our setting at least is pulse ox, high heart rate, low heart rate. That's the extent of the monitoring we do. Because like I said, um, some of the children, it's, they are supposed to be treated like they are at home. So it's not like every EKG and everything else that we do for them. But these are important monitoring pieces. Um, we did have a centralized area where it was displayed where we had, um, it took a, actually a sentinel event that led us to have a staff member sit in front of these monitors and uh, their role was when an alarm goes off, they would watch it. If it didn't correct itself for two minutes, they were asked to call the unit, uh, pick up the phone and call the unit from which this alarm is coming from, um, expecting that somebody answers the phone while they were expected to go in the room and fix the alarm, um, now to just say that, yeah, I got it, okay? We did not have unit clerks around the clock, so sometimes it was going to be the nurse who was supposed to go to the room now has to answer the phone. Um, they, the, these clinical monitor clerks, not clinical monitor clerks, uh, would document this process. They would say the alarm started at this time, uh, this is the time it resolved. If they called the unit, they would say what time they called the unit and who they spoke to. So that was manual keep, keeping data. Okay, so this is our current setup. <clears throat> when we opened the hospital in 2012, we put all these things in place. And uh, this is what we integrated. So a, a complete HP wireless system, a Rowland responder nurse call system, Massimo, Massimo pulse, ox, uh, pulse oximeters, Vocera voice over IP badges, which if anybody's familiar with those, uh, Shortel IP phones, it connects all. And then the most important part of in, uh, integration is staff buy-in, staff cooperation, and, and uh, communication and education. So I don't know if anybody has Rollin, but these, these are the, the, um, the things we use with Rollin. So we have Code Blue, Staff Assist, we have uh, Housekeeping, we have now Vent Alarms, and um, each one of these we have going through Connexol to the Vocera badges. And, right. and then uh, this is Massimo, this is our, our you know, pulse oximeter. There are wireless devices that go from the device through the wireless to the view station. Uh, back to the Massimo servers, then to Connexol. This is what a view station looks like. I'm not, does anybody have Massimo? This looks more? Yes. Patient safety net. Yeah, this is, this is exactly it. This is patient safety net. Um, so this kind of gives you the status of each device. So yellow is kind of standby. Uh, green is actively working. And red, there's no red, is disconnected or off. Um, then Vocera is, this is exactly the badge right here, it's voice over IP system, probably should stay away from the speaker. Um, uh, this is, and, and everybody kind of gets Vocera, like phone, it's a, a, all a Wi-Fi based, you can't use it outside of the facility. This is our staff assignment. There was, actually, you, you can go ahead and talk about that. There was three. Okay, so ones. all the vendors that we just mentioned here when we first were starting and planning for this process um, came to us and said how great their product was and how each one of them had everything we needed and more, and staff assignment was one of them that everybody had their own. Um, what we knew really in the beginning as looking at this was what we cannot have is a nurse do staff assignment in five different places before she can start her job for the day, not to mention then doing it three or four times throughout your shift for everybody else. So um, we looked at everything we possibly can and just kind of came to the conclusion that what we were going to choose to do was to have each of these um, systems like Nurse Call, Massimo, put in all the alarms that come out of their system directly into Connexol, and then we were gonna have Connexol distributed to where it needs to go. And they've been working obviously close with Vasera to know enough that we can manage our staff assignment piece of it easily, web-based, um, that the nurses can assign themselves web-based. Yeah, so this is, this is web-based, and at the beginning of the shift, the charge nurse comes in and puts all the nurses in for that unit. We have four units. Um, so they could pull this up on any computer and enter this information. Um, now, uh, Vocera has a, a feature where it shows you exactly what status each of these people, people are in with, with different colors, green, red, and uh, yellow. So, 
so it is a visual cue too if you're a um, manager and you wanted to kind of log into your unit and kind of quickly see um, because we do have a path set for every alarm that we have between a CNA, a nurse, a nurse buddy, or a charge nurse, we can actually see what the status of their device is because the Vicera has to be um, logged in, working for them to actually receive the alert. So if it's yellow, you know they are either busy or on a call. If it's green, they're good to go. And if it's red, either they're logged out or something is up. So that can be a way you can monitor your yeah, It's like your the staff. first line of defense to check on something when you're actually adding people to the system. Um, what they can currently do is have, you see the second spot where Ken Kapetsky is? When this person logs out, Ken will slide into that spot so they can do it beforehand, before the, la the, next per the uh, last person leaves. Ken's a good nurse. <laughs> yeah, is this is Bensi's favorite thing in the world right part. here. <laughs> Um, as part of setting up the whole system, one of the things that uh, ConnectSol, along with Becerra, we worked on was developing a path. Um, if you're trying to call someone, where should that call go? Um, if the folks, we use obviously Becerra for communication also within the um, healthcare, not the healthcare, inpatient hospital, for all disciplines. So if somebody is trying to look for a nurse on the unit, how quick can they get to them? Um, and if you cannot reach the nurse because you don't know their name, how else can you um, ask the badge to reach this person. Um, if they are not available, where should that call go? So that's putting communication, um, moving communication along much quicker than what we were used to where you would call someone, nobody picks up the phone, you leave a message, and you hear from them the next day. By then you probably don't need them anymore. So this, this has actually enhanced that whole process a little bit for us. Um, this is the Shortel IP phone system. It's a, kind of your generic uh, phone system. Um, the one thing we have for, for code blue emergencies is we dial 5555 five, five, five to access the overhead and uh, call codes. And that's in addition now to um, the nurse call system, uh, pressing the code blue button and then going over through ConnectSol to Vocera badges. So who carries the short-term IP phones? They're oh, no, no they're, they're desktop phones. phones. Oh, they're desktop Yeah, phones. but it, it accesses um, the PA through, through short -term. So we talked about a little bit about yesterday about the primary source of notification and the secondary source of notification. A lot of it is a policy driven, I guess, um, and some of it is real practice, what happens on a daily basis. We did uh, want to keep our overhead page for all the different type of codes we have as our primary source within the facility. But in addition to that, we have some of these codes going to a group of folks through their Vacera badges if they were in areas that maybe sometimes they didn't hear the overhead. So that's a backup plan. Yeah, we're actually going to get into that a little more later. Um, ConnectSol, obviously everybody knows ConnectSol who's here. And this is what they do. Um, we spent a lot of time on the phone with ConnectSol getting everything to work how we wanted to and they stayed on the phone with us any hour, any time um, to get everything done we needed to get done. This is the integration workbook. So, which um, is a very, this is a very important part of what we did. So setting up the path in the first place, and we heard from just about everybody who presented that something along these lines is what everybody did. Again, uh, Dr. Wyatt talked about this this morning. We develop our own, or, or can develop best practices for our own setting. So while in a NICU, 10 seconds probably be eternity, we chose to have a much higher delay in that pro some of those alarms and, and make it, uh, from the beginning, get go, we kind of did that to make sure that not every alarm goes to everyone at the same time. Uh, so we have our low saturation alarms. It's set the, about the same way, how most of you guys were talking. It would go to a assigned primary nurse for the room first, and if they do respond, fine. If they escalate it, it goes to the next level right away. If they do nothing with that information, after 75 seconds, it goes to the next person. Uh, now, 75 seconds, some of you want to fall off your chair. Uh, we thought about it a lot. We do have toddlers who are hooked up to Pulse Ox who just just jumping in their crib and we can see them and they're fine. They're yelling at you, they're talking to you. Um, but it's the comfort level of your, our providers whether why they need to be monitored when you have somebody with them. Our children go to school um, and you have a um, teacher's aide or a teacher with them all the time. We, we rarely to never leave them alone. We cannot leave them alone. So you know, we had to work with our providers to adjust those limits and sometimes even take them off the pulse ox when you really have a clinician with them at all times. So far, this seems to be working for us. At a device level also, and I think somebody spoke about that before, at a device level, we maximized our Massimo to the 30 seconds before it reaches to the primary level. Um, so a couple of case studies, we just since we rolled out the whole system, um, we just wanted to look at 
how some things worked, other things did not. So this particular case study is in a case where the oxygen level of the child dropped quickly and it alerted the primary nurse where, they, where there was no response. It auto-escalated itself to the second level, there was no response, um, and the alert went to the third level, which is assigned to the charge nurse and the respiratory therapist at the same time. And from the report, we saw that the respiratory therapist acknowledged the message. Then a new alarm from the same child went to the primary nurse as a low heart rate, at which time the nurse got to the room, um, the child didn't look all that great, pressed sta the staff assist button as part of nurse call instead of the code blue button, which should be, by policy, the medical emergency button. So what we do um, in these cases, when they happen, is we get a request from nursing admin to run reports, now that we have all these different systems, to run reports and to kind of look at to see what happened. You always have the version of the story from the folks who went through this event after the trauma, that after everything was settled, and then you have what the data shows up. Um, so Steve usually is responsible to run the reports. We start with Connectwell for the most part. Like I said, all the alarms go into Connectwell, so that's where we run our reports. And then I kind of analyze it to make it easier for the nursing admin to kind of read that. So you'll see the levels, how it went, and who did what. Yeah, we use um, Connectwell as a, as a starting point. We also run Vocera reports. We pull Shortel if there's a cold blue call for the overhead to kind of place, uh, make the timeline and paint the picture of what actually happened. <clears throat> we also can pull uh, video and see if the person said they did exactly what they did. So this is the same event, just going through the next alert, the low heart rate that I talked about that came through, and again, going through that whole story, how it data supported that. The second um, one I, if, case study that I want to talk about is the one that we actually saw it work the way we want it to. So the nurse had um, got a high heart rate alarm, had gone into the room, settled the patient, everything was good, had just walked back out, sat down to chart, and in about 30 minutes, the child had a dip in the uh, saturation. And it happened very quickly. It was not something we could have done anything otherwise. But again, she got the alert on her badge. So that despite these delays that we put in place, one of the ones is the low heart rate. If it does bypass that 5% um, range of the set low parameter, it will, alert, it will bypass all the delays. So in this case, it came to the nurse the way it did, should. They got to the room, called for help, and all, all was well. So it basically is the same way you interpret the data and kind of give it to the clinicians so they can see. And, and right, showing this the way we do, it's, it's used for the most part as education to make sure that we prevent this event if there was any way we could for the next time. So this is just showing one of the first connectional reports we would run. It's very colorful and a lot of information, which is why um, we both look at it a lot and make it like that for a nursing admin. Yeah, we, we definitely called Connexol a bunch of times to go back and find out what exactly what every single thing meant on this report so we could explain it. Uh, that was the old reporting, and then this is the new reporting. It's a lot nicer. <laughs> so, the, yeah, the new reporting is definitely a lot nicer, and if I were to print this and hand it off, it's not, it's pretty right. self-explanatory. Yeah. Yep. We also run the reports from the Vasera device so that we could see if people were on DND that you see, which is the do not disturb mode, which would not have sent them the alerts because that, that's what happened in this case. They were on and off for whatever reason, but at least you see that if they say, oh, I never got the alarm. We presented the, uh, nursing administration with the options of when you're on DND, you get nothing. You're on break, you're on break. And when you're, when you're off DND, you get what you're supposed to get. So they chose uh, when you're on DND, you're not getting alerts or anything, so you're not getting anything forwarded to you. A lot of times, if they don't get something, like we have a code blue, or we have a code blue uh, group that goes out to like what 15 or 20 people, and one usually one person will say I didn't get it, and then I run this report, and I usually see they're on DND. Uh, this is a Shortel report. Um, this is just to identify where and when the uh, code blue is called and over the PA system. And it brings the timeline together right. for the event because you do or you are dealing with a lot of different systems. Um, just to run the reports from each one of them can put it all together to get the bigger picture. Yeah, this and, is very helpful. And this is really at the view station that we showed before. It's just, again, a trending. It's used for trending. That's what it's meant to do. Um, and you can quickly see that, that 
dip that I talked about that we could not have prevented did happen, and that's just, again, data proving that. So this was in within the first year of when we put everything together. And when this event happened, um, two or three nurses, nurse managers came to me and said, this right here, they never happens. So they're like, there's something wrong with the technology. And we just kind of investigated and found out it did happen. And right there, if you see right there, that's Bensie's hand taking a picture of the screen. We were right. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. No. <laughs> OK, so some of the things, so that's all how we set it up. And again, that's again, less than two and a half years of all of this. Now, some of the things that we are currently working on, since we put things in place, we do have, uh, we have made several changes based on what has come up. And this is one of them. So we talked about alarm fatigue. One of well, the- Well, actually, th this is, uh, we have the two buildings, and they, all the kids go to school. So when they go to school- Drawing is not the strongest Sorry, it's point. not. When, when they go to school, they, they leave the unit, and again, we presented the options to nursing administration that we can turn, we, could, we, could, uh, we turn off the Wi-Fi in the area they were in school because um, we knew they were off the unit, and they, then we get no comm alerts constantly. So this is the new building. Sorry, it's so bad. And then this is the old building. They'd be in school. Uh, actually, they were in a trailer out here for a little while, but then they came. They're over. They were over here now. So they were off the Wi-Fi network. We turned off um, Massimo on those uh, on those uh, the the access points. So the devices are portable. They take the kids take them uh, to school. And again, at the time, we were not comfortable to take the pulse ox off a child that's being monitored at all times by a clinician or a teacher or someone is there. So when, an, when the child goes to the old building level to school, it didn't make sense or wasn't fair to have those alarms be sent to a nurse who's on the clinical units in the new building, because even if she got a low sad alarm, not to mention liability, she's not gonna be able to run to solve that issue. We do have a nurse stationed in the school, all the more reason not to send those alarms over. But when we turned off that process, what it led to was the no comms. Constant alarm. no comms, yeah, constant. Alarm and, set was and constant. talk about alarm fatigue, they wanted to kill us. So it kept coming be until it timed out for about 15 minutes. So if you are a nurse who have about five to seven kids who go to school, you can do the math. For 15 minutes, it kept coming. And there was no way around it. Um, although, well, the way around it, what we decided we would do was um, when we got this bright idea to just send all no -com alarms to be sent as just text and not an enunciation. So I don't know if I mentioned this before, all our alarms come through as enunciation which includes the room, bed, and the type of alarm it is to the person that it's coming to. So it's voice. It's not just a little beep or, you know. So no comm for 15 minutes was not fun. Um, so we decided, okay, no comm. We already know it happens when kids go to school. We decided this is how it is. Let's just make it text so that at least it's not killing them that much. Well, no comm is when they truly go to school, and no comm is also when wireless connection just got disrupted for whatever reason at any given time. Or the, the device dies, or for whatever reason the device is in the red or off. Right, so, so because of that, one event had to happen for us to recheck all of that now. Um, the no comms kept coming as text, people were used to it, did really nothing with it. And one of the devices in the middle of the day did end up losing connection with the wireless, but did alarm at a bedside level, it was still working but didn't work for, what do we three, say? Three days. About three days. Well, the, the nurse call system was down for three days. That the, the device was on and off connected to the network, like on and off for two, two days. Right, so it was a long period of time, nonetheless. And that particular child, ha child had a code, well as well, but for us to realize this is not exactly what we want to do. So what we are going to do now is make it back to being enunciate, uh, enunciating the alarm alert, but we are going to make sure these wireless devices don't go with them to the old area. Instead, we'll send them in on a portable device or something like that. So we don't have to worry about that extensive amount of no comp coming through. This way, again, next week when we get back, re-educating that when a no com does come through now, it's not because the kid is in school, it's because truly something is wrong. So you'd have to go and check that and not take it for granted anymore. So again, lessons learned, I guess, is what we would say with that. So this is, did you get there yet? Yep. Additional future Connexal integration. Uh, well, we've been talking to um, about Connexal uh, briefly, and a couple things we've been 
actively trying to implement but kind of got stuck. Um, so code blue to Vocera badges and short tail speaker phones overhead. So uh, most IP phone systems you can pick up, dial a number, and then your voice will be heard over the speakers of the IP phones. Um, so my goal was to get when somebody pushed the code blue button, there would be a text to speech that would go over the overhead. So uh, Connects Hall would access Short Tell, which would access the overhead through the PA system and, and whatever phones we designated. So all our conference rooms, when the doors are closed, there's no overhead speaker in there and they put their voceras on D and D. So when they're in that room, the clinicians are in the room, they don't get code blues. So this has been an ongoing problem. So number one was to overhaul every room with speakers in the room, which you know, it was a lot of work and a lot of money, or try to get this piece working here. Um, we got as far as we could, and then uh, it, was, it became a limitation of Shortel. So Shortel has an upgrade which may fix the problem, but we're kind of stuck there, but that's something you know, we really want to do. Um, the other part I wanted to do, but I was uh, stopped by the clinician, was also send an email, Code Blue, to whoever. So in case they're sitting in front of their computer, their door is closed, they're not getting something, looking at their phone, Code blue comes through on an email, they can go. I was shot down. Um, <laughs> the other thing is lab results. Fancy door. Huh? Oh, going? well, let's finish. Lab results, fire alarm system, uh, we want to connect that to Connex Hall to do the kind of same thing to alert everybody where the fire is, um, what area, and just so everybody kind of knows. Um, and again, I want to put email alerts on that part too. Um, and then the software code blue button, which DHB, I just found out, it stands for desktop help button. <laughs> but the, the desktop help button can also, you click it, it can send codes to Vocera badges or to the overhead if I get that working. Um, and any code, any, any kind of code. And then uh, our limitation in our hospital is that initially they want to do it with the PA system, just use Vocera, and we found out the hard way that that wasn't a good idea. So this was all outfitted with nurse call. This was not. So a lot of these areas, and we have kids like in these areas on the first floor, and they're walking in and out. We have outpatient programs, we have a school, we have a daycare. So none of these areas have like a code blue button. And if any of those kids code, then they have to run to a phone, which there's not many phones on, on the units, um, and, and call it. But the software code blue button can be put on any, any computer. So it's just a, so a piece of software that goes on any computer, and um, you click code blue, and they know where you are, and they they come running. So that's, that's kind of what we want to do. And Jason's going to make that happen. <laughs> uh, okay, so the overhead paging system. Oh, that's what you went over. Yeah, we kind of went over that already. So. Um, one of the things our EMR system, like I said before, is Meditech 6.0. Um, one of the things we wanted to try and do also was integrate um, the lab results that are coming from the outside vendor to the clinician who would like to know about it if they weren't in the EMR logged in looking at the patient. Um, a lot of our labs are not, again, based on our setting. It's not stat labs and things like that. They're more, more than likely routine labs that we run that if they did a routine draw and the site resulted back to us, we would like, if, they, if it was a critical result, to go to the ordering provider and if they are not available, possibly go to the attending provider. Um, and we moved along with it with Connexol to a certain level. We were just stuck at the area where the vendor lab has to now alter some of their messages. So that's where we're at, and hopefully that will move along. And you notice the theme that it's not Connexol. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're kind of willing to do whatever it kind of it takes. Um, the fire alarm again is the goal is to increase awareness and communication facility wide. We have two buildings. Um, for the fire, you know, the flashing lights and the blaring sound kind of get you out there. But uh, I just like the alert to the Vocera badges so everybody kind of knows exactly where it is. The more information you have, the better off you are. So I want to do the same thing to the badges, to the phones, to the email, and uh, text message alerts. Uh, same thing, I explained the software code, blue button, code, button, code buttons. And again, any code, um, email, any communication you can do through Connexol, you can send through that button, which I think is great. And I don't, any IT people here? Desktop, that's the worst part, because it could be on every desktop and they could get you anytime, anywhere. <laughs> so lessons learned. Um, there was a lot of lessons we learned. Uh, these are some of them that we didn't necessarily plan for from the beginning. So um, some of those events that we talked about led for a group of people coming together, looking at all of the reports, and really instead of blaming each other, 
uh, looking at it to see where the improvements can be put in place. And, and sometimes it was IT walking away with, well, you know, it's an electronic system and why wouldn't it do that? Why wouldn't it say it? You should make, you know, make sure that it's done. Um, and we would walk away with work and then there's clinical staff who are responsible to go and reinforce and repeat and do their part. Uh, one of the things we put in place was the email alerts coming from, can you explain that? Yeah, so um, when you're integrating, obviously all the systems are talking to each other and connects all can kind of send a heartbeat or a, just a, a tap saying or a ping saying, are you, are you there, are you there, are you there? And if that stops, connects all can send out an email saying, this is stopped, you need to check this. So uh, we implemented email alerts. That first we had it over the badge and it was kind of too much for the, the clinicians um, with everything else going on for them. So uh, we, we have it now so that it comes to us and um, the supervisor at night when we're not there. So if we don't get it, they call us and make sure we know about it. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's that part. So we also in, um, implemented system testing daily so that we know that because the nurse call system went down for three days and nobody told us anything, that we know that they're connected because we have uh, somebody in nursing, we, we installed the nurse call button in um, the nursing office, it's just a test button, they press the button, goes through, connects all to the Vocera badge, we know they're all talking, so we know we're okay, and if that doesn't go through, then we get uh, a call. Actually, I get an email knowing every day knowing that that, that happens. Um, mock, cold, blue test, team testing. Uh, so we'd like to, you know, we keep in, encouraging the nursing staff to continue to do mock codes um, so that we get comfortable and not just at the time when it's actually happening. And we, again, have them start the whole process from the beginning, which is our first level, pressing the cold blue button to start the whole process of alerting so that um, people don't forget that step when, when you're in that situation and trying to just care for the kid. We have a little bit of a challenge with that because we keep telling them to include us and a lot of times they forget to. Because I want to see after this happens, I want to run the reports and make sure everything, everything went where it's supposed to go. Uh, this is kind of a big one. <laughs> I'm a big culprit of this because I believe uh, all the vendors when they say, yeah, no, that's all right, nothing will happen. It'll be fine, just upgrade, nothing changes. Um, and something always changes. <laughs> so uh, after any kind of upgrade from any of the vendors you're using, do a full test. I'm not saying test every single bed in your hospital, but test all alerts on different units, different floors that are Behave, that behave differently, so that'll give you a good um, idea if everything's working correctly. And that's everybody, everybody said in every presentation, education, communication with the staff, very important. So I don't know if anybody else gets faced with this um, on the clinical level. Nurses do say that they get a lot of alert and we know for a fact they are probably fatigued in some areas, um, but when they don't get any, you don't seem to hear about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a little scary. <laughs> Somebody who gets a lot every day, if I didn't get one for the shift, I'd be worried. But again, they're there to do a job, which is to do a good job and take care of the kids and finish their shift. And it is challenging to get people to be engaged and just kind of at least report the big stuff. <laughs> you know, then you have the ones you always say are the big complainers. I probably, I'll take them any day. I'll take them any day over the ones who don't say anything because Again, we're on the other end of it. We're not on the units all the time. We're not the ones who are you know, working with the patients and these are all support systems in place for them to carry out their job um, efficiently um, and safely for the kids. And if anything changes, I'm sure you guys all would want to know in your areas too. And that's it. Does anybody have any questions for Steve or Bensie? Yeah, hi, Fancy. That was really good, thank you. Um, so question, why did you choose to go through the Vocera assignment versus the Connexol assignment? Hmm. Well, we chose Vocera, one, because again, like I said, the setting that we were in and the type of things that we need to do, all this technology came in at, together at the same time to the nurses and clinical staff. Vocera web-based piece that I, we just had a clip of, it's pretty, it's just simple in the sense that they just have to pull their name into the slot. And it, the rooms were labeled and you say, this room and CNA, bring, who's the nurse? And to this day, I have to be honest with you, they have a paper assignment. And it's so hard for them to leave that alone. So things that they were doing on paper, 
except now they can't just leave the Vocero piece out because that is the only way for the system to know who to send the alerts to. And that became a big part of their workflow. So while they keep their paper and that's their comfort, because when they first come in or the previous shift charge nurse kind of writes out who gets what, they just have to kind of pull that into the spot. They also print this out. Yeah, they, yeah, they get crazy. They do it on paper, they do this, and they print it out just in case Vocero changes itself. You know, <laughs> uh, paper is comfort. There's so, one limitation of this though. Um, Vocero doesn't log this. So when we're trying sometimes to paint the picture of what happened in an, for an incident, we can't go back and see if this person was actually in this slot. So actually, I just want to talk to Connexol again to look at their staffing, staff assignment. So I guess I was what I, was, I, I understand that you chose that, but I'm wondering how do you then use some of the other features like the call points and the workflow type of things? Have you started to use any of those? So we have not started to use the workflow piece of it, which really we do want to explore and look into. But majority of the things, the path call path or, or alarm path that I talked about, it's kind of set the same for all units. Okay, we have four units. We have the nursery units, toddler, and two adolescent units. Um, the children, the type of children and the type of monitoring we need to do is not like an acute care setting where an ICU will be very different from med surge. So in that sense, we were able to standardize that whole piece. And it's set in the background. Um, they just know that this is what's supposed to happen. So that's, that's the piece that we took. But the workflow is something we definitely want to explore. So, sorry. Um, so I'll get a little greedy and ask two questions. Um, the first is, you had a slide about LTV ventilators. How are you uh, sending data from those to Connexol? Do you use a data aggregator of some sort? No, I, I, wish, we, I wish we had one. We actually, um, they got one, a Pearl, Pearl Hub Systems. So definitely talk to her. We we're going to test them out. but. Um, they're just, they're, they're dumb alarms, so they just go. So it's, there's no, no, no information, no nothing. Through it's the nurse call. Right? Yeah. The nurse it's, call. Yeah. Vent, just a vent alert. And without something in between that, we can't take that information out and, uh, okay. and give them so more detail, a, which, which is something we do want to do eventually. Okay. That's a good point that you brought up. I forgot to mention this piece of it. The ventilator, you have a cable going from the vent right. to the nurse call system. All it can tell you, well, I guess you could label it whatever, but it will be one alert or alarm, it will say vent for us. It will just say room number and vent. Um, that was an alarm that definitely all your high pressure alarms that could go over as vent, vent, vent. When we analyzed that information, um, when one nurse after six months complained, uh, we looked at the data and it was one of those 500 alarms a shift type of thing that happens. And it was just insane. So what we did in that case was able to pull a team together, nursing, respiratory, and medicine to kind of say, well, how much delay can we put on this that you're comfortable with before it goes to anyone? Um, and we ended up with a number of 10 seconds of um, suspension in, within Connexol before it goes to anyone. We then went back and ran report, well, we ran report before that in Connexol to know that majority of them were literally under five seconds. It didn't sustain itself for 10 seconds, but every single one of them went through first. So once we put the delay for 10 seconds, it drastically reduced the amount that went to the nurse. The other side of it, when nurse call went down for a few days, those ones didn't go either. Right. So it's a balance. But if you send it through your nurse call, your nurse call is going to alarm every time the ventilator goes off. You're still yes, going to, get, you're still going to get a noise, right? Well, which yes. is part of the problem. Right. So you still got you still got right. ambient noise yeah. happening. Which it's is part of yeah. the alarm. Yeah. Right. But again, the difference is when it's a high pressure alarm that's for one second, you get a tip and you see the light outside, then it stops. It doesn't keep dinging. If the alarm is not sustaining itself, it does not continue dinging. I understand. But you still got the nurse call going off as soon as the ventilator goes off. It does, yeah. yeah. You, yeah. Could put a, you could put a delay on that. Can you put a delay on that in the ambulance support? From, you well, the delay, delay in the tele, like from the ventilator to the nurse call, you can put a delay. Yeah, well, and, well, and well, in fact, you can, you can configure your So how do you have it hooked up? Is it an aux jack? Is it just a, a straight alarm, or do you have straight some alarm. straight alarm? Okay. Directed right into the alarm. Okay. But normally we don't have coverage for vent or vent CF or vent that way we don't overload the nurse call system. So one of the things you may want to do also is work with your respiratory nurses to raise your vent alarm limits. So because they like to set them really tightly, so they'll set 
So just to stay with my greed and ask my second question, and then I'll, John, I'll give it to you. Um, this is just a general question for the other children's hospitals in the room as well, is infant protection systems. Is there a best practice, I mean, something like an AeroScout or a, a McRoberts um, as an alarm source, not to add yet another alarm source to the mix, but what kind of alarms are best practices to send? I mean, do you really want to be sending those alarms as well to you know, nurses, what, what are other institutions doing, those that do have infant protection systems in place? Definitely depends on your, on your setting and what kind of hospital you are. I know because we're long-term care, so we're going to be different than NICU. Maybe I can just give a quick answer from a NICU point of view. We have an alarm system, um, and it's all the doors, all the exit doors, everything. It's like, you know, when you go to the soup go to the department store and you buy a pair of jeans that has a little electric tag on it, that's what the, we tag the babies. And so anytime they go out to a door and you try to take a baby, it's a code pink. Um, we don't have it connected to our middleware at all because we didn't feel that the priority, I mean, in 20 years I've never had an actual code pink. You know, there are, the number of reported abducted babies is so low, the reality is that you're, in an institution like yours, you're likely in an entire generation not to have one. So. You know, we have an alarm. If it goes off, it goes off at the entrance, and, and then the clerk announces code pink on the overhead. We just kept with the old system of the way we were working because we just didn't think it was bother. It was worth it to do an integration for something that we think will never happen. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, we do have our vents coming through our system. It took us quite a while to get there. We use Excel Medical and the Pearl Hub because we feel the need. There are a lot of serial items that need to be on the network and how you can manage that. Um, we worked with our middleware, which is Connexol, and Ed, what, about a six-month project, um, and it took some time, and that's only in our NICU now, but part of the clinical alarm team has been asking how we roll that out for the rest of the house because it's bigger than that. Um, and it, I'm going to tell you it's a challenge, but you need your respiratory therapist there. And Ed, did we end up with five vent models that we manage? And then we had to look at, you know, with the at-home model that they bring in with them, they bring their ventilator to the hospital with them. Can you, how do you connect that when they bring their home? Well, there's a port on the Pearl Hub for that. A large European question. A European question. Sure. How do we handle the home vent? model, but we found that that really is not a high percentage for us, but it is somewhat of a challenge. So it, it looks like those serial items are going to need something that puts them on the data net worth with Connexil to look at them. And to answer your infant induction system, we don't have one in place, but Connexil has a great solution where they can bring a building up or a hospital up and they tie in AeroScout your life safety, your fire alarms, everything, your cameras, and they can take a picture. Um, it's a great demo if you ever have the opportunity to see it. And you look at what you already have built into your facilities plan that you can tie in to build some stuff without buying another system because a lot of the parts and pieces are already there. Any more? Jason Wilson. Uh, I have a question to SCC about these, uh, these no these no <laughs> alarms. Sorry. <laughs> There's no comm alarms. Is there, and it's, it sounds as if it principally occurs when these portable units are taken to the, the old part of your facility for school. So is, is there another filtering criteria that could be used, like a, a time-based filter that would say between 
that's that's what exactly that's exactly what we're going to do. Yeah, well, that's exactly what we're going to do. Well, partly in the sense that if we <clears> use the time frame, so there is a time we know that the children will physically be in school. The problem is that nursery kids don't go to school. Okay. Um, there are children within the third and fourth unit that normally would go to school. If they're sick, they may not go to school. So this all or not, you know feature may not help if the kid is physically on the unit and the device did lose connection from um, the network, then we would not get those alarms. Right. So it's, it's we did throw that yeah, idea, yeah, we, we actually, did think yeah, about it, right. and that's really because, unless we could say specifically room for the day, like if I can go and kind of switch, then it will be on the nurse to kind of do that switching on a daily basis, but there was really, time was possible, we talked about yep. it, but the problem was the kids who don't attend school, then what happens, so. Became okay. <laughs> okay, great. Bensie, Steve, thanks so much. Appreciate your time.